Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I am with my good friend, Dr. Lynn Prashant. And Lynn is an amazing person. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Gloria. Pleasure to be with you again. I love the opportunity. Now, say, I know you uh, lost your husband, and say we have a widow who is watching the show right now, and she's all locked up in her grief. What have you got for her? I want to say that grieving is both an emotional and a physical process, and that attending to the body as the barometer of our truth is one of the keys to address what we're dealing with, the symptoms of grief that show up in our body. And if we listen to the body's messages, then we really can attend to our needs, which are specific to our loss and our own personality. What do you think one of the major body less messages people get after they have a death? The body contracts. The heart, metaphorically or perhaps realistically, actually breaks. Stephen Levine says that the heart that heals after loss is stronger because scar tissue is thicker than regular tissue. I think the important thing is to trust what we're hearing from inside our body because all the theories that are available to us from all the experts can be applied when we're ready and if they speak to us. We have to honor the pace of our process of re-identification after losing a beloved. So I'm hearing you and I'm saying, I have a closed down heart, I can feel it. How do I open it? Because you are such a great body movement person. One of the first keys to reclaim a sense of well-being is to work with the breath. And the nostril breath actually has a different quality than mouth breathing. And each nostril, the left nostril is the lunar nostril and can help calm us when we're agitated. And the right nostril is the sun in the daytime and the masculine. That can energize us when we're feeling too exhausted or too grief-stricken to water our plants, take care of our kids, or walk the dog. Show me a little bit of how I would breathe with each nostril. Sure. It's very simple. We want to demystify it. If I just support my arm and I close my left nostril, many people know about alternate nostril breathing through yoga classes. This is a simplification. If I'm exhausted, I want to close my right nostril and breathe through my left. And each breath, breath in, in the tradition, it's prana. Prana is life force, thus the term pranayama that's bounced around in culture and often misunderstood. I can support my elbow on a table or with my other hand, just gently close my right nostril. Easy, gently, according to my breath level, according to my lung capacity. If the person is struggling because we've been crying or we're congested due to the emotionality of loss, then we can inhale and exhale through the mouth. The important thing is to inhale through the nose because right at the bridge of the nose is where the left and the right nostril blend the air, mix it and warm it right at the place at the center of our intuition. And if I want to calm myself because if I want to energize, then I would do the opposite. I'd close my left and breathe through the right because that'll give me some daytime life force and active energy. Right, I love it. So there is some great information that you can use. And I want to tell you about Lynn's book because, or have Lynn tell you about it because you can learn all sorts of wonderful things like this from her book. So tell us the name of your book and where we can get it. Okay, it's called Transforming Somatic Grief and it's based in the principles of integrative grief therapy, which means any activity that I engage in with conscious awareness to use my grief as fuel for transformation can alleviate that a quantity of unexpressed grief. We're looking for expression rather than repression. Okay, give us the full name. It's Transforming Somatic Grief. My work is called Degriefing, and it is available degriefing.com, and you can order the book there. How fabulous, Lynn, and thank you so much for being on our YouTube today. You do such great work. Oh, yeah.